It's Wednesday, September 27, 2023. Please take a second, make sure to like this video, share this video, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Without further ado, I wanna get right into what's happening today. Uh, markets across the board were pretty much flat. And I started out the morning, I was watching a little Fox Business, I was watching some CNBC, but Fox Business had a couple guests on. One of them was talking about how strong the consumer is, how resilient this consumer is. Another one said, just keep buying, the market always goes up. And I just think, how dangerous is this to be talking like this complete nonsense? Anybody that believes that the average U.S. consumer is strong and resilient right now, uh, you're living on another planet. I don't think the consumer has ever been this weak. We'd have to go back. Uh, we would have to go back to the Great Depression to see a consumer as weak as the one we have right now. People cannot save money. They're getting worried. They're getting absolutely destroyed at the grocery store, the gas pump, uh, paying for labor. The consumer's in big trouble, ladies and gentlemen, and as we talked about yesterday, if it wasn't for credit cards, uh, keeping this can uh, getting kicked down the road further and further, uh, this would look a whole lot different. But again, market's flat today. The people on the television are continuing to tell you to keep buying into these markets. They want the consumer to go out, keep spending. Uh, I was looking at the uh, website, uh, theeconomiccollapse.com, 10 things which prove the US economy has hit uh, a major pivot point. And just to, to go through uh, these for you really quick, consumer confidence was down more than expected this month. Uh, two, the conference board's index that measures future expectations has actually dropped below a level that historically signals a recession within a year. The number was 73.7 in September. Um, it was 83.3 in August, continuing to go down. Mortgage rates are at a suffocating level. Sales of new homes plunged 8.7 percent last month. Another one, a record number of U.S. consumers are indicating that the credit conditions are getting tighter. What a shock. You haven't seen nothing yet, ladies and gentlemen. Credit card losses are, are increasing at the fastest pace in 30 years. Federal Reserve uh, is now laying off 300 workers. That's how bad it's getting, ladies and gentlemen. Even the Fed is laying off. The number of bankruptcy cases in the U.S. has increased on a year-over-year -year basis for 13 months in a row. Goldman Sachs is warning that America's oil reserves uh, have hit a 40-year low. Here's another one. We're hearing uh, a projection that the price of oil could reach $150 a barrel. And the last one on the list, ABC News poll has found 71% of Americans believe that the country is on the wrong track. Uh, that number, I think, is actually much, much higher than 71%. But uh, again, this is just another indication, 10 more indicators right here of the direction we're heading in and why every one of you must continue to stay on path, continue preparing. Let's talk about this. This is on Reuters today. Oil's, oil jumps 3% as steep U.S. crude stocks draw adds to supply concerns. We are now witnessing a 13-month high in oil prices. You're seeing this at the pump. Oil today was up over $3.60. I just checked it. It's at $93.71 a barrel. We are approaching $94 a barrel, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I didn't purchase any gas today. I would uh, probably gather that we're probably going to see super unleaded uh, today, tomorrow, breaking $7 here in the desert. And most places will probably be at six plus dollars for regular here uh, in the desert. You go to LA, these numbers are going to be much, much higher. But uh, this is telling you and I to prepare for more inflation. Oil prices going up means you're paying more at the pump, means you're going to be paying more for food at the grocery store, you're going to be paying more for those retail items at Walmart, because all of this stuff is being transported uh, by gasoline and diesel, which requires oil. So get ready for more inflation. They told you it was going down. It's not. It's going up. We don't even know what the real inflation numbers are, but what we, what we do know for sure is inflation is not going down. I'm not seeing any relief at the grocery store. Certainly not seeing any relief at the gas pump. Where are you seeing relief at? Everything from what I see 
continues to get more and more expensive. 10-year Treasury yield reaches levels not seen in more than 15 years. As I make this video, the 10-year bond yield, 4.61%. This is going to affect your mortgage rates. This is going to affect the interest rate on your credit cards. It's going to affect the rate on your auto loans. It's going to affect the rate on your student loans. This is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. We better be paying close attention now uh, to the bond yields, the, especially the 10-year bond yield. This is a big deal. The cost to borrow money is going up. The cost to service debt is going up. You need to be aware of that. These problems, ladies and gentlemen, are not going away. I don't know about you, but as, as I'm watching this stuff today, I'm getting more and more concerned. I'm happy that I, I've been preparing for years. I'm, I'm glad that I've bought the gold, the silver. I put food and water away. I've gone out, trained at the range. I've been working on the mat. I'm hitting the gym. Um, I, I'm happy I've been doing that. But I know that millions upon millions of people have not worked on their health. They're not working on their security. They're not working uh, on their financial situations. They're not working on their spirituality. They're not getting closer to God. And, you know, as we continue to see crime escalate throughout the country, this is a red flag. This is a warning sign to what you may be dealing with in the very near future. You know, people are stealing stuff for entertainment. They think it's fun. Uh, they're, they're turning around selling this stuff, you know, on social media. But what happens when these people begin to get hungry? And we're watching the system continue to, to deteriorate. And it's going to be much harder to feed this country, especially as more people come to this country. Think about the stress this is going to put on the system on feeding people. And what happens when people get hungry? They lose their minds. It's, not, it's no longer going to store uh, to, to you know, flip a handbag for some cats. It's, it's no longer going to the store to a Macy's or a Nordstrom's uh, for fun and entertainment and, and stealing. No, now it's about survival. Now people are going to be angry. They're, they're, they haven't eaten in a couple of days. They're not going to go to Macy's. They're not going to Nordstrom's. They're coming to your house. Are you prepared to deal with that? If you are not, you need to wake up. You need to get your house in order, get your security in order. You need to get out, get trained, get basic training, ladies and gentlemen. CNBC, mortgage demand shrinks as interest rates hit the highest level in nearly 23 years. I checked bankrate.com today on a 30 year. It was 7.78% for a 30 year fixed rate. Applicants to purchase a home fell 2% for the week, down 27% from the same time a year ago. Anybody telling you that the housing market is not collapsing right now is out of their mind. Just because prices haven't come down yet, Sales are plunging. Sales are collapsing. Refis fell 1% for the week. They're down 27% uh, from a year earlier. Again, these are startling, startling numbers. This is um, anybody in the mortgage industry right now has, is just getting absolutely pummeled. CNBC, mortgage demand shrinks as interest rates hit the highest level in nearly 23 years. Anyone telling you that we're not in a housing collapse right now is out of their mind. They are drinking the Kool-Aid. Home sales are absolutely plunging. They have, they have collapsed. They have fallen off of a cliff. Prices are next. Just because prices haven't come down yet doesn't mean we're not in a housing collapse. When you cannot sell a house, when there are not qualified buyers, when nobody can buy a house, when um, listings are not moving, you're in a housing collapse, and we're in one right now. Applicants to purchase a new home fell 2% this week. We're down 21% from the same from, from the same week a year ago. So 21% fewer people are applying this same week, this week, than a year ago to buy a home. Refis fell 1% for the week. They're down 27% from a year ago. So homes are not selling. People are not applying uh, for uh, mortgage applications. Uh, this is a housing collapse, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know if it's a month from now, six months from now, eight months from now, but I can tell you from my experience right now, looking uh, in the southern part of this country, every day 
I get home after home with price reduction after price reduction. Here's the problem though. The price reductions are not enough. The home prices are so elevated. These, the, the sellers have drinking so much of the Kool-Aid that they believe that a 10, 20, 25, $30,000 reduction is enough. These homes are still extremely overpriced. I'm looking at homes that right now are listed for $650,000, but back in 2019, 2020, they were $250,000. This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And only a sucker would buy a home that has gone up from 250 to 650 in a matter of three to four years. Not going to happen. Anyone in the mortgage industry right now, if you're a lender, you're a real estate agent, you're, you've got to be feeling enormous pain. I, I, I can tell you also from experience, these real estate agents and brokers that would write me daily on uh, social media and tell me how wrong I was and that everything's fine and that it's booming in my town. It's booming here in Phoenix. It's booming here in Austin. It's booming here in Las Vegas. These people somehow now have, have disappeared. They're, they're gone. I, I don't know where they've gone. Uh, maybe they're bartending. Maybe they're back at Starbucks. I don't know. I hope they're okay. But again, if you're in the mortgage industry, if you're in the real estate industry, I hope you saved a lot of your money because you're going to need it because we are going to see many, many years ahead that are going to be very, very depressing for real estate, for the mortgage industry, uh, and probably uh, the entire construction industry. I wanted to mention really briefly, I was um, watching some of the local news uh, this morning, and they had brought up a development about 10 minutes from where I'm making this video right now. I believe it's called Telus. I think it used to be called Silver Rock in La Quinta. So it went from Silver Rock to Telus. And what's really interesting here, I'm gonna have to go out there, film it, fly the drone, and see this one for myself. I haven't been to it, but this is on hundreds of acres, uh, massive resort property. I believe the Montage. Uh, was supposed to, uh, supposed to build a resort there. There's a big convention center that was supposed to be there. Uh, million dollar homes, golf course, shopping, all this incredible stuff. Well, nothing has been going on. It's been sitting with nothing happening. They're looking, they say, for financing. The city wants to know what's going on. The developer I, I apparently has got no answers and, and there's been no communication uh, with the developer and the city and apparently the the funding has run out and now they're looking for financing and in the meantime this thing is sitting uh, and it's been sitting for quite a while I don't know if it's been sitting for a year or multiple months but it's been sitting all summer and a, a lot of these a lot of the framing uh, that has gone on with some of the structures out there you know have been under rain that massive rain that we got out here it's been sitting in the sun and it's basically a big old dirt cloud out there and so I'm gonna have to go out and check it out. But it, it, this to me is again, a sign of the times. And it, it, to me, it's just uh, the movie that we saw in 2008 where these massive developments just stopped. It just stopped, they turned into a massive dust bowl and they sat for many, many years and then eventually they were sold off for pennies on the dollar. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen with TELUS, uh, but it's been sitting apparently for a very, very long time with no activity, no funding. So what is gonna happen with that? So I'm gonna make sure to get out there, check that out. But I wanted to, to bring that to your attention because we're talking massive convention center, uh, montage, million dollar homes, golf course, shopping, and all of it has just stopped. And my concern is we're probably gonna see that with the Disneyland project out here in Rancho Mirage. So we have these two massive projects and the, the, the Disney project in Rancho Mirage, they've already said is on the chopping block. They're thinking about stopping it very, very soon. And what, what happens then? We have a massive 800 acre dust bowl sitting in, in Rancho Mirage for how long? A year, two years, five years, 10 years? I don't know, but this is uh, also very, very concerning when you see these multi, multi-million or billion dollar developments begin to seize up. The Hedge today, first ever filming of Singapore's gold reserves in super secret gold vault. Uh, Channel News Asia recently published a new documentary film about Singapore's national reserve assets. This included Singapore's famed monetary gold reserves. Uh, Singapore Central Bank uh, MAS, or MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, holds 
tons of physical gold. Now get this, it has now bought 100 tons of physical gold since its gold buying spree in April of 2021. And there will be people out there that say you shouldn't be buying this barbarous relic. Uh, it's worthless. You don't need it. But you look at what the central banks are doing. I was watching uh, a interview with uh, Frank Justra the other night. And you know, Frank Juster made very, very good points years ago. He said, you should be holding cash, you should be holding gold. Today, we're seeing uh, the dollar index explode, gold and silver got crushed. And so it's good to be holding some cash. This is why I believe you have to have balance, you need to be diversified, hold some cash, because cash still has purchasing power, cash is still important until it's not. But to me, you know, great, uh, you're going to have more purchasing power with cash. When cash gets hit, and it will, you're going to see gold and silver go right back up. And so I think it's important right now in, in this inning of the, of the game to have both and be very, very diversified. I don't think there's ever a bad time to be holding gold and silver, especially gold. I buy gold when it's going up. I buy gold when it's going down. There's no right or wrong time, in my opinion, to be buying gold. I, I just believe you shouldn't be selling gold. I've never sold one ounce of gold in my life. I continue to acquire it. And when you see it uh, crushed today like it, like it was, you know, you know, do what the central banks are doing. They're gonna back up the trucks and they're gonna buy this stuff on sale. And if you could go to the grocery store and buy steak on sale for say 20% off, would you go to the grocery store and buy steak? I would be running down there to buy steak right now if it was 20% off, 30% off, 50% off. Take advantage of any sale you can get. But uh, this is really astonishing when you look at what Singapore is doing. And of course, you can talk about India and Saudi Arabia and China and all these other nations and central banks who are stockpiling this stuff. It's extremely important to have. And make sure if you need a place to buy from a reputable place, my link down below, SD Bullion. And let me be very clear here, ladies and gentlemen. First off, I don't care where you buy it from. In fact, I don't really care if you buy it or you don't. It's going to make no difference to me. It makes no difference to the gold price. The central banks are going to make sure of that, okay? The, the central banks will push the price to, to, to the moon when that time comes. The average retail buyer is not going to have any influence on the gold price. Institutional buyers do. But I just think, in my opinion, what I'm doing, what my circle, what my network is doing, is we're buying gold, we're buying silver, we're stacking cash, we're looking for good opportunities in real estate. Um, that, that's what we're doing, that's what I'm doing. And you have to do what you think is right for you. Again, I don't care where you buy it from, I just think that you've gotta have some insurance. and. You know, this stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't entertain me, it doesn't do tricks, it doesn't cook me dinner. It brings really no excitement to my life, this beautiful shiny metal. But what it does do is it gives me peace of mind, it allows me to sleep good at night, that if things escalate, if we go into uh, more uncertainty, we see severe pressure on the US dollar, inflation gets out of control, a lot of things can happen. The first thing you're gonna run to is insurance, this is not an investment where you're trying to flip and make money quick. Um, this is insurance. This is protecting yourself. This is making sure that you have purchasing power, that you can eat. You know, Make sure you're putting food and water away, but there's never been a time in human history where an ounce of gold did not buy food and water, period. And anybody that says different is lying to you. Read history. Look at what's going on in Venezuela right now. Look at Zimbabwe. Look at any economic uh, fiat currency collapse. Look at hyperinflation around the world and take a look at what everybody has turned to, gold. Gold has purchasing power in the best of times, in the worst of times. So you can go to my link, SD Bullion, down below, or you can go anywhere you want, or you can go buy some crypto today, you can go buy some Apple stock, you can go buy whatever you wanna buy, whatever you think is gonna protect you in the worst of times. But be careful, be careful out there, make sure you're preparing. I wanna uh, shift gears here. And this will be the last article I share with all of you because it's extremely important. Uh, this happened a couple of years ago. Many of you know, somebody uh, reached out to me last night and I was, I just read this article and they reached out to me and sent me this article and I, I oh, that's funny. I, I just, you know, I read this earlier. FBI sued after losing valuable rare coins in seize, uh, uh, that it seized during raid. Now this raid took place a couple of years ago. 
in in Beverly Hills, California, the uh, FBI uh, raided. I think there were about a thousand safe deposit boxes, and so there were some apparently a few bad actors who maybe had some money in some of these safe deposit boxes. So in, in that case, what they did was they took everybody's money. I think there was about eighty six million dollars in cash, diamonds, gold, silver things of that nature. So because of a couple bad actors, they took everybody's safe, depo po safe deposit boxes. David Meline stored 110 gold coins there, and these were, I believe, rare collectible coins. And he only had one box, they were all in that one safe deposit box in, in that Beverly Hills vault. The FBI said that they lost the coins. Then they said that, hey, we found some of them and they returned 47 of them. So they lost them, didn't have them, but then they returned 47 of the 110, leaving 63 coins still missing. Some people had their precious metals stolen. They had cash stolen. Um, and many people had to get attorneys and fight to get their money back. I remember there was a, a, a gentleman who had won a lawsuit for an auto accident. He was in $50,000 cash. He put it in there and he had a fight to get his cash back. Wasn't uh, in any kind of illicit activity, was not a criminal, but he had to spend money to get his money back. So now people are fighting the system with their own money to fight the system to get their money back. So it's costing them more money to, to go after their money. And it's just shocking uh, where we're at today and how easy it is to just lose everything maybe you've worked for, everything you've saved up. And so as I leave you today, remember the old saying, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. I highly advise, highly advise that you know, if, if you're holding some cash, you're holding some gold, some silver, whatever it might be, uh, the last place I advise that you put it in is in a safe deposit box at a bank and even one of these uh, private vaults. Because all it takes is one warrant from a judge who they, who, you know, they're, they're basically saying they fooled the judge with falsified uh, evidence, got, got the judge to sign this warrant. So they get the warrant and now they can go in and just take everything. And you have to spend a lot of money to get it back and you may not even get it back. So don't hold your money in a bank. Maybe don't hold it in a private vault like this. Maybe you need to put it somewhere else. Maybe you need to bury it. Maybe you need to have some, some places uh, that you can put it where you can get to it in a time of need. But, you, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying put it under your mattress, but it, it's beginning to look like the mattress is a lot safer than a safe deposit box at a bank or a private vault in Beverly Hills. And if they can go into Beverly Hills, California, into a private vault with a thousand safe deposit boxes, they can go to your bank like nothing. So maybe you're better off burying it in your backyard. Maybe you are better off putting it in your mattress. But I think now you have to start thinking um, outside of the box a little bit about where maybe some safe places are to hide your assets and cash because apparently it's not safe in the bank. It's not safe in a private vault in Beverly Hills, California. So maybe it is safer somewhere else. So think about that. How easy it is for them to just take everything you worked for so sad so sad it's disturbing it's actually really repulsive when you think about it how many people got hurt here how many people just said it, it's not you know, you know just think if you had ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars in one of those boxes and you call up an attorney and they're going to tell you it's going to cost thousands of dollars and it's going to be time consuming and most people probably go you know what forget about it let them keep it i don't i i i don't want to sit in a courthouse uh, for multiple days. I don't want to pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to an attorney. It may actually cost more for the attorney than the money that you had in that vault. So these are things we got to start thinking about. It's not just, you know, uh, the criminal that uh, is trying to rob you. Now the system is trying to rob you. And they can get a warrant and go to your bank or your vault and take everything. So be aware of that. Be aware of that. On top of 
the bailouts, the bail-ins, and all this, uh, all this other uh, crime that's taking place. And, and we're going to see a lot more of it. Have a great day. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe.